Being a new player in Albion Online is a scary experience, so let us help you with that. Right now we are putting together a playlist in which we are gonna discuss in detail every single system that this game has. The purpose of this playlist is to teach you as a brand new player everything there is to this game and explain the complicated systems in the easiest way possible. Today we're discussing the map of Albion Online and I know this might seem as an underwhelming subject like come on what's about the map you just open it you just watch where you want to go and you close it that's it well that's not really it in albion online you see albion is a very simplistic game meaning that every single system in the game has a very good purpose i'll even go as far as to say as the map is the most important thing of the game that's why i want to start this guide with it because if you know how to navigate yourself efficiently around the map Trust me, you will have a much easier time overall playing Albion Online. You can even avoid gankers by just knowing your way around the map. Let's just start with the basics and we get to the more complicated stuff later on. Basically, the map of Albion Online is uh, divided into, there's the Royal Continent, and the black zone the black zone is the whole continent in itself and we're gonna discuss that later on in this video but so far let's just start by focusing on the royal continent the royal continent is divided in um, six parts basically there's a city controlling a different area like as you can see limhurst controls the forest port sterling controls the mountain area Thetford controls the swamp uh, Matlo controls the Highland and Bridgewatch controls the Steppe. But there's also a sixth area, Kellyan, which controls like a circle in the middle of the map, that being the red zone. We're gonna get there in a second. But the map is even further divided whenever you zone in. As you can see, the map itself is divided in a cluster of maps. Let's say this, or let me pick something easier to pronounce. Aspenwood, let's say Aspen. This is a map itself. This is another map, Uwood is another map, but those maps are also part of the big map. We call those zones. This is Uwood zone, this is Aspenwood zone. We don't really refer to zones by also referring to the name. We mainly refer to the zones as to talk about the tier and the color. So this is not Uwood zone, this is a tier 5 yellow zone. This is not Aspenwood zone, this is a tier 5 yellow zone as well. This is not our song Glen zone. This is a tier 6 red zone. But why does the tier and the color of the zone mean? Well, let's start with the tier. The tier of the zone, just like the tier of your gear, which we're gonna discuss in a future video because that's a very complicated subject in itself, means progression. Think about it like this. In any MMORPG, you start at level 1, let's say. Or some at level 10 for some reason, but you start at a level. And from that level, you progress to the next one, and to the next one, and to the next one, and to the next one. Well, Albion Online doesn't have a leveling system. It has a um, tier system. Basically, I've been playing for three years. I'm not max level if I'm not playing a 8.3 set, which is the max level set. I could be a player that played for three years, four years, ten years, and I would stick to tier 2 armor. I could do that. It's not very efficient at all, but I could do that. I could technically be a level 2, let's say, player that has been playing for eight years. The progression is determined by the tier of the content that you can do and by the tier of the gear that you are wearing right now. And again, we're gonna discuss uh, the gear in a different video because it's a very complicated subject in itself and I want to try to divide this subject in multiple steps so it's much easier to follow up and understand. Basically, think about the tier as you think about levels in any other MMO. You start at level 2, tier 2, you need to progress to level 3 at some point, tier 3, you get to tier 6 at some point and then you get to tier 8. You want to do that for the same reason you're progressing in any other MMORPG. The higher the level, the higher the rewards, the higher the experience you get out of it, the higher the uh, silver you get out of it, so the currency you get out of it. Everything basically is much better. It's much, much better overall. In this game, there is a general rule of thumb which says the higher the risk, the higher the reward. By progressing in higher tiers, you are risking much more because as you know, this is a full loot MMO. But now I bet that you're probably kind of confused because you're like, all right, what does the tier of the zone have to do with the risk of getting killed? Like, can't I just get killed in a tier 2 zone? Why do I need to progress if the risk is the same? Because this being a full loot PvP game, I would guess I'm always risking death, right? Wrong. That is where the color of the zone comes in. Let me explain. There are four different zone colors in this game. There's the blue zone, the yellow zone, the red zone, and the black zone. The first three zones, the blue zone, the yellow zone, and the red zone, can be found in the royal continent. But the last zone, the black zone, is a whole continent in itself. Which, as you can see, it's about three times bigger than the royal continent. Basically, the color of the zone dictates what other players are doing or are able to do to you. 
how you interact with other players basically in the blue zone this is your typical mmorpg experience everybody's a friend you can team up with everybody everybody's nice to you nobody wants to kill you nobody can even kill you the blue zone is the only safe zone in the whole game nobody can attack you outside of duels you won't be able to get ganked you won't be able to get uh, pk'd by other pk's let me say it like this the game doesn't give you the possibility to become a pk in the blue zone so then you would be like all right but why am i not just staying in the blue zone then because at some point you are going to reach the max tier zone which is tier 4 and you will want to progress to a higher tier for the same reason you want to go from level 15 to level 20 in any other mmorpg it's progression it's fun the rewards are much better and you cannot wait to get to that next cool thing that you want to unlock and when you progress you will get yourself into the yellow zone the yellow zone is different very different to the blue zone but not that much it's different in the fact that you can do what's called flagging up you flag up by pressing this button right here this will change you from what it looks like right now to what it looks like over here you will basically become a player killer or as we refer to them in this game a pk by becoming a pk you can attack any pk or non pk person basically out of two persons fighting let's say only one of them needs to be a pk so don't feel like you've been treated unfairly let's say if you get attacked by a player killer even though you weren't flagged up you don't need to be flagged up but if you want to attack other players then you do need to be flagged up and uh, you can see if you're flagged up or not by looking over here if it looks like this you are flagged up if you can also see it right next to your character's name if it looks like this that means that you are a player killer this is the symbol for player killers now player killers in the yellow zone are not really a thing even though you can flag up as a player killer let me explain in this game every single time you die you lose everything on you but in the yellow zone even if you get player killed even if another player comes in and technically kills you you don't really get killed you get knocked down just like you would if you die to a mob let's say so player killing doesn't result in a death it results in a knockdown meaning that hey you didn't die so you're not losing anything that is how it works in the yellow zone you can go and attack other players and if you kill them you technically just knock them down so they won't lose anything they just have to wait for like two minutes and then they get up so basically it's a zone in which you can go uh, progress into higher tiers and not risk that much maybe there's that annoying player that just comes in and pks everybody but he wouldn't really get anything out of it he would actually be losing on reputation which we're going to discuss in a future video because that's another topic in itself and the next thing in line is the red zone which is very similar to the yellow zone meaning that players can flag up but different in the fact that this is the only zone in the royal continent in which players can kill you and yes you heard me right kill you meaning that you die and lose everything that you have on you that's where the full loot starts to creep in that's not all there is to it there's also the black zone let's discuss what what we've discussed so far so the blue zone is absolutely safe the yellow zone can have you flag up just to practice pvp for example you can become a flagged up person in the yellow zone with no trouble but it wouldn't really be worth it because you would just lose reputation which again we're going to discuss in a future video and you wouldn't really get anything out of the players that you've killed because you technically just knock them down not kill them the red zone is the only zone in which you start getting something for your player kills because you can flag up and you can kill other players but you need to go through some trouble you need to flag up you need to make sure that there's no blueberries around you the blueberries are the people that are not flagged up uh, they're called either blueberries or callium police we're going to discuss that as well I, there's, I guess there's a lot to this game to be honest so that's why i want to take it step by step when in the black zone you don't have to go through any trouble to kill other players you are automatically flagged up yes even you as a friendly player looking to have fun with other people you will become a hostile to everybody else on the screen that that's how you will appear you will appear as a hostile player and so will everybody else to you meaning that you or anybody can attack anybody else there's just an exception to this whenever we're talking about guildmates alliance members or party members other than that everybody can attack everybody else now why would you want to get yourself in the black zone the black zone seems like a horrible place to be in well you want to get yourself to the black zone for the same reason you want to progress from level 30 to level 50 in any other mmo let me say it like this so you visualize it better let's say you do a dungeon in stackbone well if you do a dungeon in you would which is a yellow zone you would make five times more than you would in Stagbone. But it doesn't stop there. If you do a dungeon, let's say, in um, Murkwield, which is a tier 7 red zone, you would get five times more than you get in You Would. And that doesn't stop there. If you do a dungeon 
in uh, let's see a uh, tier 8 black zone you would get five times more than you would get in murk wield which is a tier 7 yellow zone uh, a tier 7 red zone basically it's progression it's everything you get everything much easier if i were to give you advice i would say try to get to the black zone as fast as possible because this is where doing solo dungeons or doing solo content in general starts to become worth it the only thing that's worth it in the royal continent right now is the faction warfare system which we're going to discuss in a future video other than that you should do all your content in my opinion in um, the black zone there, there are some exceptions such as corrupted dungeons such as hellgates like practice corrupted dungeons and practice hellgates but we're gonna get to those in another video <laughs> all right and uh, now progressing for uh, pve content let's say it's not the only thing that you need to keep in mind whenever you're talking about progressing there's also the gathering side of the game and when we're talking gathering it gets a little bit different you see in order for us to be able to properly discuss pve we had to zoom into the map well for gathering i want you to zoom out again i want you to look at the map like this and i want you to stop seeing those little zones you will need to see those as well but i'm gonna get there in a second i want you to see the overall picture of the map you see there's a bunch of biomes there's the mountain biome there's the swamp the high the highland the steppe and the forest each of those biomes offer you different types of resources and each of those biomes has a primary secondary and tertiary resource basically think about it like this the primary resource is the goat that's what you want to gather that's the best thing that's what you're looking for if you are in said biome the secondary resource is kind of like the game saying man you shouldn't really gather this here but i mean there's a lot of it you you can you can gather it, it it's fine it's fine and the tertiary resource is the game basically telling you why are you gathering this here stop gathering this here go into a different zone this is not the no let me tell you each primary secondary and tertiary resource for each of the zones so you can have an easier idea and i'm also gonna ask my chicken to put it on the screen so you have an easier time visualizing it basically in the highland the primary is stone the secondary is ore the tertiary is wood in the step the primary is hide the secondary is fiber the tertiary is ore in the forest the primary is wood the secondary is hide the tertiary is stone in the mountain the primary is ore the secondary is stone the tertiary is fiber and in the swamp the primary is fiber the secondary is wood and the tertiary is hide so basically let's just take one of them for example let's take the forest for example the primary resource so the resource you want to be gathering over here is wood the resource you don't really want to gather here but i mean you can it's not a problem is hide and the resource that you don't want to gather here it's not worth it gathering here is stone all right but now we've discussed the map zoomed out let's also zoom in for a second because this is important as well now we need to take care about the tier of the zones you see the tier of the zone matters in telling you what kind of tier you can find what kind of resource tier i mean you can find in the set zone for example in the tier 6 zone you can find tier 6 resources in the tier 5 zone you can five tier, you can find tier 5 resources but that's not all there is to it uh, think about it like this let's say you want to do solo dungeons and you get yourself in the tier 5 zone you can only find tier 5 dungeons and maybe you could find an upgraded dungeon tier 5.1 tier 5.2 or tier 5.3 but you cannot find the tier 4 dungeon you cannot find the tier 3 dungeon in the tier 5 zone well for resources you can actually do that in the tier 5 zone you can find as low as tier 5 minus 2 resources so that means tier 3 resources in the tier 6 zone you can find as low as tier 6 minus 2 meaning tier 4 resources basically just subtract 2 from the main tier of the zone and that's the resource the lowest resource you will be able to find in that area in the tier 8 zone you will be able to find tier 8 minus 2 so tier 6 resources are the lowest resource you will find in a tier 8 zone but what about the highest resource is the tier 6 let's say in this zone the higher tier resource you can find well not really because you see there are in between tiers just like with solo dungeons and just like with your gear you have 6.1 6.2 6.3 those upgraded tiers start from tier 4 the tier 3 resources don't have that the tier 3 resources are just flat tier 3 resources but starting from tier 4 and up to tier 8 every single resource can be 0 0.1 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 we call that enchantments and we are going to discuss that in a future video but basically all you need to know is that for example in a tier 5 zone in the tier 5 yellow zone you can find as low as tier 3 resources so tier 5 minus 2 and as high as 5.3 meaning tier 5 upgraded to max that's the maximum you can find and everything in between like th those are not the only two things that you find i'm just saying the 
borders of it this is what you can find now in the royal continent the zones are much more neatly organized but in the black zone it gets a little bit crazier that is why you want to look at the biome you're in for example i know this is kind of weird that it's a snow area over here but it being a snow area means that you can get ores for example as a gatherer the black zone is the best place for you because for example if you are living in bridgewatch let's say and you want to gather ores you kind of have to go to Fort Sterling. Maybe then you want to gather some hide. You want to go to Deathford. Oh, then you remember that you need to get some trees. You go to Fort uh, to Limhurst. There's a lot of running around. Well, in the black zone, let's say exactly the same thing. I want to gather some ores. Perfect. Here. Then I want to gather some trees. Perfect. Let me see the closest forest here. Then I want to gather some hide. Perfect. Here. Like, look at this. It's much closer. Look at th this distance versus this distance. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> everything is much much closer that is why you want to use the black zone but all right so we've discussed why you want to progress what's up with the tiers what's up with the colors of the map let's also discuss what's up with some map markers that you find let's say in the royal continent there's a bunch of things that you need to keep in mind first of all there are those little things right here that when you click them say that there is an outpost over there what does that mean well this ties up in the faction warfare system and you don't have to worry about it now it won't affect you until you get in the faction warfare and we're going to be talking faction warfare in a future video so we're going to skip those for now this is a storage post this chest right here you can find those all over the place they're much more frequent now than they used to be uh, back in the day whenever the map was not upgraded and those storage posts which apparently i cannot find this okay here Apparently, you cannot find that many of them. Those storage posts act like banks. This is basically something that's uh, meant to train you for the black zone. Think about it like this. Whenever you go in the black zone, the continent is much bigger. And let's say you've entered from Bridgewatch. And I'm going to explain exactly how you enter in the black zone in a, in a second. Let's say you've entered from Bridgewatch and you traveled yourself all the way over here. But now you feel like the servers are getting kind of crowded. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. It, there's a lot of people you don't want to get ganked maybe you got something really nice with you you don't want to lose it then you go and instead of traveling all the way back you go through to this outpost right here and you just deposit all your gear over there and you leave it for later to just come back and bring it whenever you feel like the servers are a little bit more safe like there's a little bit less people because as we've discussed the black zone is a full loot zone so that is like an open world bank think about it like that the next thing that i want to discuss with you are those things right here those are dungeons there are called static dungeons you know how when you go and do a dungeon you actually have to find the dungeon and then you just enter the dungeon do the dungeon and stuff like that well those dungeons are always on the map you know exactly that if you go in this map you will find this dungeon right here it's also there for you if you want to check it out right now there's another dungeon again you just know for a fact that there's a static group dungeon in that map always those static dungeons offer you increased rewards and they're much better to do than normalized dungeons but we're going to discuss those in a future video the dungeons come in different types there's the undead dungeon there's the morgana dungeon there is the heretic dungeon which let me see if i can find i think it's this one right here yep and the um, mm, giant dungeon like the one with the giants under a cave i never knew how to call this one basically there's four types just like solo dungeons you find those giants kind of looking like this you have the undead like the skeletons you have the morgana uh and you have the um, skinny guys that are miners basically i never knew how to call them but <laughs> yeah those are that's why they look different but there are, there is also something else that's also a shade of blue that might confuse you and let me try to find it to show you exactly what i mean oh yes this this is what i wanted to talk about this is an area and let me show you how it looks like on the map in which you can gather arcane essence arcane essence is used for upgrading potions think about it as like uh, you're gathering stone let's say it's kind of the same thing but instead of gathering a stone you you are killing mobs and getting the resources that drop from them all right the next thing that i want to show to you on the map are those little tunnels right here that are up fairly hard to spot you look this one is easier to spot this is a tunnel meaning when you are in this map let's say you see that there's a road and this road leads to this spot this spot and this spot but what is this this is a secret passage it's not really that secret because now a lot of players know about it but those used to be secret passages in which you can teleport yourself let's say let's say you're in runnel sync and you want to get yourself to bow scale fell normally if you didn't know about this you would just go like this boom northeast you would zone into this map you would be over here and you would go northwest boom 
Oh, no, sorry. You would go mm, uh, southwest. You would go like this. Boom. Then you would make your way into Bowscale Fell. Well, if you know about this little shortcut, you can just go from the here to here. You zone in. You have a very short tunnel. And you get yourself over here. Uh, they're all over the place. Like, let's just go in the black zone and try to look for some. There, oh, look. There's one over here that leads to this one over here. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. But you can generally make... Um, Makes sense of where the tunnels are heading. They're kind of hard to spot sometimes. But uh, yeah, you will... Look, there's another one over here. There's much more of those. But I, I cannot find them right now. Because I guess that's what happens when you're recording. You cannot find what you're talking about. Alright, and the last thing that I want to discuss with you about this. Are the resource hotspots. Uh, basically, we've discussed about gathering. Uh, and you know that uh, to get a certain resource. You want to get yourself in the appropriate uh, biome to do that. But the game helps you even further than that. By giving you resource hotspot. It, basically, this is a spot in which there's a lot of a sad resource. Let me try to find... Look, for example, in Oak Corpse, there is this. Tree Grove. This area has an unusual concentration of pine and other trees. There's also those things in the red zone which give you higher tier. Like, look for the tree grove, cedar and blood oak. This is higher tier wood. And again, it's a hotspot. There's also different types of hotspots like, let's say this. Look, stone. You can find a lot of stone over here. And again, it's a hotspot. There's also uh, this. Basically, for every single resource, there is a hotspot. And this is how they look like on the map. You can randomly find them and usually if you don't know what something is on the map, it's a very good idea to just click it and see what that is. Because this, ex this explains it, to be honest, this explains it. Now, those hotspots in the Royal Continent are usually highly contested, meaning that there's a lot of players farming them. And it makes sense for it to be like that. Maybe not in the red zone, but in the yellow zone, man, it's hard to gather over there. It's hard. It's safe, but it's hard because you won't really find anything. Well... That's why you want to go in the red or black zone. And I suggest the black zone because the black zone is much emptier. And in the black zone, just like with anything else, you can find those resource hotspots much, much easier. Like, for example, this. You have a hide den. That's where you find the hide. Here, you have an ore vein. You also find this in the royal continent. Like, it's not just in the black zone. But it's much better to get in the black zone to, to gather in those uh, resource hotspots. Now, the other markers that you see on the map right now are related to alliances and guilds. And this is a whole topic in itself. This is basically explaining how the black zone is controlled by uh, different groups of players, as you can see. Everything is controlled by somebody. This gets very complicated. I don't even fully understand this system, but it's a very good system that's gotta have a whole video in itself. Like, it's... It gets very, very complicated, but really, really fun. And one last thing that I want to discuss with you all about uh, things that you find on the map is something that you can see only when you use the N map. By pressing N, basically, you open the localized view of the map. And in this localized view, you can basically see everything that you see over here. Like I see that there's one, two, three, four, five outposts. But you also see it in much more detail. For example, check this out right here. I can see those outposts. I can also see the little um, spots in which I won't be able to pass through. I can see the little chokes over here and over here. I can see that uh, this place is basically surrounded by mountains. I can see that there's a static dungeon over there, an entrance to a static dungeon. Basically everything that you see on the open world map, but much bigger and better. But now you see something differently. What is this right here? This is a Roads of Avalon portal. It's basically a whole zone in itself. It's kind of like an in-between between the Black Zone and the Royal Continent. Think about it like this, just to quickly explain it, though this will require another video in itself. Um, let's say you want to travel from Ferndale to Dustlight Fen. Normally, it's a long way. Well, if you manage to find yourself a proper Road of Avalon, that's like a highway. Instead of basically having to take like 11 maps to get from this spot to that spot, you could be able to find, let's say, a connection that would take you there straight away. You would just zone into a road of Avalon, you find a connection to Dustlight Fan, you exit to Dustlight Fan, and technically you just travel through three maps. Or technically one map, because it's just the road in between. But let's say three maps, including the zone you start from and the zone you end up in. Instead of having to take 11 to 12 maps, something like that. And there's also a lot of content that you can find in the Roads of Avalon and more to come in the future. But again, that will require a different video in itself. 
Thank you so much everybody for watching. If you like what you saw and you found it useful, please let me know in the comment section down below and also drop a like and subscribe as that truly helps us out a lot. This video was also made possible by our amazing Patreons. Thank you so much everybody that supports us over there. We truly appreciate you. If you want to see more of us, I strongly suggest you check out our other two channels. There is a clips channel where we put really funny short form videos and a reviews channel where we cover different games and game news that you might be interested in. Thank you so much everybody for watching. Have a good one. See you next time.